This is the clutch worm mechanism on a XS650. This is the component parts basically. You've got the worm housing, uh, the worm arm, and some of the more recent ones I think have got two fixing holes for the clevis pin. The original one for the early ones is at the end, which gives a long sweep but a short stroke. And the newer ones have a um, a hole here a bit further up the arm which gives a shorter stroke but more movement on the cable um, but I believe that is a little bit sharp on the clutch whereas that's a bit easier um, I don't know what the uh, second hole is like I've drilled it myself in the original arm and I haven't tried it yet but it'd be interesting to see but easy enough to change so that's the arm there's a rubber seal that goes into the arm which is like a grease trap really just stops any dirt and muck from the cover um, getting into the worm drive. The return spring, that's the clevis, the clevis pin um, and the clevis pin um, that actually holds the clevis pin in. Um, there's the fixing screws for the housing and there is the adjustment screw um, with the lock nut. So let's stuff all this together. So I want to put a little bit of grease on the seal and put that back into the arm. Um, Make sure that seats properly all the way around. Uh, I'm not sure how much grease is supposed to go on this, if any. Um, there must be a reason why Yamaha have decided to have a plastic housing um, with a metal worm together, plastic and metal together. They've obviously tried metal to metal in the past, I'm sure, um, and in their experience they've obviously decided to go plastic and metal. Whether that should be dry or whether it should have a smear of grease, I don't know. But I have tried it with quite a lot of grease and I've found that you get a strong hydraulic effect which actually uh, makes it a bit stiffer to operate. So that's just something to bear in mind. Right, so pin I'm going to put in the inner position. Give that a try there, I think. This is a new clevis but on the original arm. Just put the Knock that on there. That's it nice. So that actually goes around that way like that. Good. So next step is let's put the oh um one thing you need to watch is that you've still got the ball bearing in the uh, in the shaft there. Yeah, just gonna see it there, it's got some grease on it. It's crimped in so it shouldn't come out. There's four crimps there on the end of that um uh, tube but they can sometimes fall out and uh, obviously you need that in there that's what the actuating arm actually um, drives on that, sits on that so let's assemble it now I've uh, found the easiest way to fit this is to fit the housing first the non-existent screwdriver that I haven't got. Flat blade just about works. Now I found that to get the actuating arm in the right position, which is basically 7 o'clock from the perpendicular, so if you take a line through the housing like that, then the arm, the actuating arm, wants to end up about 7 o'clock, which is there, so that it's when basically going to finish up with the spring on the spigot there. The easiest way to get that, I found, is to put it at the 3 o'clock position and then screw it in and it always ends up in the right position that's the correct position seven o'clock um, and that's where it needs to be put the spring on just make sure you've got enough tension so that you have to pull it a little bit to get it on the locating spigot there if not then simply uh, use your pliers to just pull that spring in a little bit and adjust it so you've got a bit more tension on it you need to have a little bit of tension there so that um, it returns nicely and it's not loose and that's basically it apart from of course I've left out the adjusting strip it's fallen out you can go in afterwards now the adjusting screw you leave fully out to adjust it and then you 
position your clutch lever where you want it. So if you've got small hands or you're a lady, then you might want the lever closer to the bar. Um, whereas if you're bloke and big hands like me, you might be happy with it to be further apart, further away. But anyway, put the clutch uh, lever where you need it, and then adjust the slack from here. So you screw that in until all the slack is gone. And then you back that screw out one quarter turn and then you lock it with a lock nut. And that should give you the right adjustment for the clutch but you might need to experiment with that a bit. But that's basically how you do it. The Haynes manual suggests that you adjust the lever, the clutch lever, to maximum out um, position. And I think that's going to probably be too deep for some people to actually reach with their fingers comfortably. So my tip would be to put the lever where you want it so that you can f you can get to, to the grip easily with your fingertips and then adjust all the slack out with that screw there. And that's all there is to it basically. One little tip I've found since is that if you put too much grease into this it does have a hydraulic effect and it will stiffen up so that it's stiffer to operate so what I would recommend is when you've got this fixed in position before you put the spring in just try it and make sure that it's nice and smooth and easy to operate if there's any stiffness there then you need to investigate why as that's going to add uh, pressure to your clutch operation from the from the uh, uh, grip from the lever um, the other thing I've found is that if you tighten these screws down on the housing too tight it does buckle the actual mechanism slightly so that that then becomes stiffer to operate and I'm not sure whether perhaps mine might be distorted I'm going to have to investigate that because my screws are definitely too loose in order to get that arm to, to move freely so that's just another thing to check check that if you're having those really tight that this hasn't now stiffened up so that it's stiff to move it should be nice and free and easy like that and that's basically it